This is CPM Pre-Calculus, Chapter 2, Number 23. So here we're asked to sketch f of x that's defined as a piecewise function, the first piece being negative 2x plus 7 for x is less than 3, and the second piece being 2x minus 5 for x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay? So let me go ahead and say, well, that's just a line, y equals negative 2x plus 7, with the slope is negative 2 and the y-intercept is 7. And here we have another line, y is equal to 2x minus 5, with slope positive 2 and y-intercept negative 5, right? And we know that um, 1 is for x is less than 3 and 1 is for x is greater than or equal to 3. So we know here at x equals to 3, is that there's some transition from one piece to the other. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's sketch them both. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. Remember that has the y-intercept here at positive 7 and the slope being negative 2, meaning the rise over the run, negative 2 over 1, right? So it's going to be rise negative 2, run 1, rise negative 2, run 1, right? Rise negative 2, run 1, rise negative 2, run 1. But we're only looking at values less than 3. So I'm going to see x is 3 right here, right? So I'm going to connect this going to the left, right? This should be a straight line. All right, so let me fix this because I didn't make it that straight here. And also, this point here should be an open circle, right, because it's not including equal to 3. So let me go ahead and draw this as an open circle at 3, 1, right, like this. Okay, so that is the first piece in blue. The second piece I'm going to draw in green, even though it's the same function, f of x, um, and that's going to just be... 2x minus 5, so we know um, y-intercept is negative 5, so let me go ahead and add that, so negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, right? And so we start here at negative 5, and the slope is 2, which is 2 over 1, the rise over the run, so we go up 2 over 1, 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 right? So this should be above the 4. This is above the 5. Up 2 over 1, right? And so on. But again, we're looking at x is greater than or equal to 3. So I'm going to start at x is 3. At this point, circle it in and continue to the right. Okay? So here is my function. I'm going to draw them it all in blue here because it's the same function f of x, okay? All right, so now in part a it's saying this graph should look like a function you have seen before. Well, yeah, this v-like function that has an, a sharp edge cusp here, that's just our absolute value function kind of, and it says it should look like that, right? So part a it says our function looks like the absolute value function. So write it um, with the necessary transformations, okay, so let's say g of x is equal to the absolute value function. So write f of x in terms of g of x. Okay, so let me go ahead and draw g of x. So I'm going to use a different color for g of x. Right, g of x here is equal to the absolute value of x. Okay, that one starts at 0, 0, and this one has... Um, Whatever the x value is, is equal to the y value, right, for the positive way. So it looks like this. And then for the negative, negative 1 produces a positive 1, negative 2 produces a positive 2. And so it's going like this. Okay, so there's g of x, the absolute value function. So what happened between these two? Well, <clears throat> let me go ahead and write the different transformations. There can be a reflection right across the x-axis there can be um, a shrink a vertical shrink a vertical stretch there can be shifts 
shifts horizontal. Let me just write horizontal shifts or vertical shift. Okay, so looking at these two, which do we see? So let me go ahead and just eliminate the ones that we don't see, right? We do not see a reflection across the x-axis. Um, shrink or stretch, maybe this one in pink, right? The one in pink looks to be wider than the one in blue. We'll talk about that. So shrink or stretch, maybe one of these. Definitely a horizontal shift. It's going to the right Right, so starting at the absolute value function, our one in blue shifts to the right by three. So it's going to be right by three. And vertical, it starts at zero, zero. And so right by three, up by one. So it's going to be up one. Okay. So do we have a shrink or a stretch or neither or what's going on? Well, <clears throat> what, again, if we look at g of x, that is just y equals to x over here and y equals to negative x over here. And the slope, so if we break that up, that's y is equal to x and y is equal to negative x, right, for x is greater than or equal to 0 and for x is less than 0, okay? So if we break it up like that, we can see, well, y is equal to x has the slope 1 and y is equal to negative x has a slope of negative 1, okay? But over here, we see our functions, th these have slopes negative 2 and positive 2. And then we could also see, well, the rise over the run, right? The rise over the run is going to be 2 up, 1 right. And here we have 1 up, 1 right, 1 up, 1 right, 1 up, 1 right, and so forth. So that we're seeing is this from pink to blue, it's basically after we're going to do what? Well, every point vertically <coughs> is going to be multiplied by 2, right? If you bring this point at 1, 1, and then make it go up to 1, 2, it's going to have the slope of 2, rise 2 over 1. Again, <coughs> the point at 2 being 2, if we bring that up to 4, right, it's going to be rise 2 over 1. So if we multiply that y value by 2, again, 2 times 2 is 4, but well, 3 um, the pink is 3, but if we multiply 3 times 2, we get 6. So it would be up here. And so then we would get something parallel to the one in blue here. So what we're doing is we're not shrinking. We're stretching by factor of 2. By factor of 2. Okay, and you can see that here it's 2 times x and 2, I mean, negative 2 times x and 2 times x. Okay? So we want to do these three things to g of x, okay? So our new function then, in terms of g of x, is just going to be stretching by a factor of 2. Well, to stretch by a factor of 2, you multiply g of x times 2, right? Horizontal shift right by 3 means we want to subtract 3 from the input, right? Because that's going to shift it to the right by 3. And up by 1 is going to be adding 1 here, okay? So if our function, if our absolute value function is g of x, then our function in blue, f of x, is going to be just defined as 2 times g of x minus 3 plus 1, okay? So that's how we did it. We saw the stretch, the shifts, and we... Um, plug them into our g of x here. All right, so let's go on to part b. Part b, let's see, what does it say? Part b says shift f of x five units to the left and three units down. Okay, so f of x is here in blue. If we shift it five units to the left, this is going to be here. It's going, let me use a different color. Okay, it's going to be moving one, two, three, four, five units to the left and three units down. So five left, three down. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so if we shift it five units to the left and three down, basically we're going to have something that looks like this, right? Write down the new function g of x as an absolute value function. 
Okay, so how do we write that down? Okay, they want to call it g of x again, but I already used g of x in part a, so let's call this one instead of g of x. Oops. g of x, let's call it, no, not g of x, let's call it h of x. Okay, so h of x is just going to be our function f of x shifted left 5 units and down 3. So that's going to be f of, and then the input shifts left 3, so that's going to be plus, I mean, left 5. That's plus 5 here, right? And then down 3 is minus 3 here. And if we put that in terms of g of x, right, in our absolute value function, that's just going to be, well, if f of x is 2 times g of x minus 3 plus 1, well, what is f of x minus 3? I mean, what is f of x plus 5 minus 3? So let's go ahead and do that. Well, f of x is going to be 2 times g of x minus 3, so our x value is x plus 5, minus 3, right? That's just this part, plus 1, right? That's just f of x, my, of x plus 5, and then minus 3. Okay, so let's simplify that. We get 2 times g, x plus 5 minus 3 is x plus 2, right? and then um, minus 2 on the outside, okay? So right there is our new function in terms of our absolute value function. We can even write this as the absolute value function. It's going to be 2 g of x. Remember, g of x is our absolute value function, so we could write it as g of x here will be just absolute value of x plus 2 minus 2, okay? So let's go ahead. Um, this is our function that we defined in part, part B. Part C asks us to verify this all using a cal calculator. Okay, so let's take out our calculator. First of all, let's plug in our initial function. So turn it on, put y equals, make sure it's cleared, all of them are cleared, and go ahead and put in f of x. So f of x is negative 2, right? Negative 2 plus 7. I'm just copying this negative 2x plus 7 for the values of x less than 3. So I'm going to open a new parentheses just next to it and put x, excuse me, x less than number 5 less than 3. Okay? Plus, and I'm going to add in this side, it's going to be 2x in parentheses 2x minus 5 Right, this is just how we do our piecewise and put in the domain for this piece is x greater than or equal to 3. So x second math greater than or equal to is number 4, 3. Okay, so let's graph this first. See that it looks like what we have in blue. Yes, it does. That looks good. So let's go ahead and graph parts B and C as well. So part B, um, Part B, we have just 2 times g of x minus 3 plus 1. We can write this in terms of absolute value function being 2 times g of x minus 3 is just the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1, right? So let's go ahead and graph that. Um, let me go ahead and change this to be... Um, Let me see, how do we do this? I believe oh, all the way to the left. I want to change it to be um, dotted on the output. So then you're going to see different ones. Actually, I'm just going to make it regular. And the next one, I'm going to make it solid, like bold. Okay, so this one, I'm going to make it two times the absolute value. Two times, where's catalog? Second zero. We get absolute value, 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1. Okay, so let's graph these both. The first one is should give me this in blue, and the second should be overlapping it in bold. So perfect. Okay, so that's the first two. And finally, I want to do part C is just shifting it left 5 down 3. 
So let's go ahead and check that it goes 5 to the left and down 3 if this is my function. So I'm in y3, I'm going to graph that, which is 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. And yes, that's what we have here in this hot, like really bright green. It's shifted to the left, 5 and down 3. So there we go. We verified these all in our calculator. Done. Okay, so make sure you're able to do it in your calculator as well. And that ends CPM Precalculus Chapter 2, number 23.